gun game. Oh, spooky. Happy Halloween, everybody. Wait, it's it's been like two weeks. So... Oh man, I'm, I'm so late to making videos. Happy, happy Halloween. Oh, uh, okay. Anyways, do you guys like the PlayStation? I, I love it. I remember picking up the console in 2009. I, I was a little late to the party. I mean, honestly, I could have gotten a PlayStation 2 and play two systems in one. Or hell, I could have gotten an older PS3 and play all three systems in one. But it was a simpler time and a really stupid good gag. There are just so many games on the system, it's hard to even narrow it down to one company to review, but I did it. Good old Phoenix Games. If you guys ever wanted Shovelwater, this company is a leading contender on the ones who started that whole frenzy. Some people even speculate that Phoenix Games is the company Code Monkeys. You might know them better for their games like Simpsons Skateboarding, Shrek Treasure Hunt, and Castlevania Area of Sorrow on the cell phone. Not even like the smartphone, like the actual flip phone. Yeah, it's simpler times, guys. I already made that joke. Okay, well, the company is terrible and has spouted a crazy amount of games. So I'm taking it upon myself to review every single game, only on the PS1. And also, I guess not the movie ones, unless you want that. And if so, just please don't. Please don't make me do it. The first game I'm going to be reviewing is called Rocks. Well, I guess Halloween is still going on, guys. Happy Halloween. Ha! <laughs> The playstyle is similar to Tetris with blocks falling down, and if you fill up the screen it's game over. The blocks themselves are dice that show a corresponding number. The point of the game is to round up 3 or more blocks in a row to equal 6, or something like that. I actually have no idea. I just kept placing the blocks down hoping that it would all work out for the best, which it did. I made it to level 3 actually. It plays okay, but for a puzzle game it's really lacking. If you can just place blocks randomly and beat stages, something is wrong there. It's a cool idea, but the execution is to be desired. Another standalone title is Butsubushi. You have an actual character select screen, which is pretty neat. Uh, Zero looks pretty cool. I mean, I've always wanted to play as an anime construction worker. Just always. Khrushchev? Uh... Uh, oh, like Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet Union politician that was really into the Soviet space program? Yeah, that's that's clever. There's so many people to choose from. Uh, uh, Carlos. Perfect. I picked the best one, obviously. Look at him. Oh, the game itself is a puzzle game where you can drop square tiles of your color on the field, then just lunge them at the opponent. The last one standing wins. Honestly, I'm pretty bad at this game, but for what it is, I really enjoyed it. The characters are nice and it controls decent enough. It feels more like a Super Nintendo game, not the PlayStation 1 title. And also, is uh, Carlos racist? I mean, I think he is. I, I don't, uh... I don't know. Here, we have a cool multi-cart, or I guess, multi-CD? What do you call these when they're not in a cart form? Uh... Well, whatever. A lot of these titles came out on separate CDs, but the nice people at Phoenix Games decided after no money was coming in to just make a two CD set. Good, this good idea guys. Sell it on Christmas. H Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Ever there are a total of 12 games on these two CDs. What a deal, right? Well, in all reality, there are just three types of games. Surfing, racing, and uh, space racing. With the surfing games, they are literally identical, with the only difference being what you are riding. It controls like hell. This is what the game is supposed to look like when playing. Yeah, looks doesn't look too bad. Looks like fun. And this is how I play. I guess like in real life, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Same goes for the racing games, you have just different cards to choose from. I mean, even the cards in the racetracks are the same. They seriously just copy and pasted games and put them on store shelves. The last game is Power Riders. And hey, a character select screen? Wow, there was actually some time and effort put into something. Clearly, I'm going to be the giant robot that makes it super hard to see anything. It controls decently, every button does something different. You even have a blocking button and a turbo boost button being a big part of the experience. You can even battle other robots. The only thing the game really is lacking is music. It gets pretty hard just listening to this. Just slap on some Biker Mice for March Super Nintendo music and you, you're golden. You're, you're gonna have a good time. The last two games for this video are the Cindy games. Cindy's Caribbean Holiday and Cindy's Fashion World. With each title you have five main games to choose from and they are all just, just horrifying. 
You get an extremely 2001 flashlight intro to each game and then are just pushed into it with just a split second to prepare yourself for this extreme terror. Cool! A must have! I look wonderful! I'm gonna be a- I'm a princess! I like this a color! must have! I look wonderful! This is my favorite! I must have! Make it stop, please! Okay, well, I'll just do this, that, and... Oh, I'm done. Okay, then. All the levels are just so poorly done, it's really not worth talking about. The final level of Cindy's Caribbean Holiday is to dress up your girls. Let's see what Kate has to offer her. Oh, mm, mm, mm. Love me some racism. No other character has the option for a goddamn conical hat. Is that racist? Am I just looking way into this? Cindy's Fashion Mall is pretty much the same game, with less variety. You can tell that Kate had a bad time in the Caribbean. Quarter Girl's back is just beat to hell. These games are meant for little girls, obviously, so I guess a 21-year-old Russian male is not the right crowd for this, but still, this is really bad. I found nothing of interest to do in these games, so maybe I'm being a bit hard on it? I guess? I don't know. Well, I mean, you have a coloring book, which might be fun. I've always had an eye for art. Let's just try out this image here. Ooh, ah, let's get some black. Oh man, this is going to be so good. Got some red. That always looks nice with black, making it super emotional. And uh, done. I call it Insidious Forder, starring Cindy and the gang. Whoa, there's even a love indicator on here? I can finally find out if my true love is Jake Gyllenhaal, and that he will ask me to the prom. Oh! I love you, Jake Gyllenhaal! <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, you know, it'd be nice. I'm lonely. It's, it's always lonely here. Um, I, I really hope you liked the video. It's been a little bit. It's been a couple weeks since I posted an actual review. Been sick. The ride never ends. Uh, I did post an Undertale video. If you want to see that, I don't know why you would. It's a minute long, but for some reason it has over 40,000 views from the time of this video which is just okay that's cool i'm also at almost 150 subscribers so for you guys that have to subscribe to me because of that video and you're not watching this video you know why don't you stick around you, you can add me on myspace if you want to see my previous video i do a video on uh, land of the dead the road the fiddler's green it's on the gurgak tv if you want to follow me on twitter there's my twitter it's at gurgak games but yeah that's about it bye guys See you in like a week, if that. Okay, bye. Bye, guys.